everybody. Today we're debating whether or not Jesus existed, and we are starting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for this epic debate today as we are going to have a triple threat match. We have an atheist with us, a Christian with us, and I'm updating it in the title. We have a heathen with us, and we'll let uh, Callan explain exactly where she stands regarding her position in just a moment. Want to let you know if this is your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. We are very excited for a lot of debates that you might want reminders of. Just as a quick example, this is one that we had just booked, and it's, it's a wild one, folks. It's crazy. It's Matt Delahunty and Mike Jones from Inspiring Philosophy will be debating in January in person on the reasons to believe in God's existence. That'll be live streamed right here. So we are pumped for that. And hit that notification bell if you want a reminder for debates like those. Also, want to let you know, forgot to mention, I'm going to tweet this out right now. If you guys want to help by spreading the word on Twitter or on Discord, wherever it is, Facebook, we are actually going to have 100% of all of the Super Chats will be going to child burn victims today. So the Child Burn Foundation, which I've just put in the description, they have excellent ratings from Charity Navigator, which is basically a charity watchdog. They just make sure that the funds are going to where the organizations say that they're going to. And so we are very excited as that will be a, uh, it's a very good cause that we're excited to give to. So with that, all of our speakers are linked in the description. So highly encourage you, if you're listening today and you're like, hmm, I like that, I want more, you can find more right in that little description box down there. There are links, are linked below. And with that, thanks for being here, atheist pastor Jonathan or McClatchy and Callan. It's a pleasure to have all of you. So I guess what we'll do is kind of open the floor just in case anybody does. We'll let each of you take as long as you want, like a flexible two to five minutes, and just kind of laying out where you stand on this particular question of where or whether or not Jesus existed. And so I guess we'll go from left to right. So uh, Atheist Pastor, if you want to start, the floor is all yours. Sounds good. Good day, everyone, and good morning from Australia. It's uh... It's a challenge uh, to get up at 7 a.m. where I am, so it's uh, it's a miracle that you've got me. So maybe that is uh, proof of something divine. Um, so my position is I don't believe that there was a historical person called Jesus. Um, obviously, being an atheist, I, I don't hold that the Christian Gospels are are accurate or you know or, or a true representation of a, of a deity. Um, it, this can be a, a challenging topic, I guess, for a lot of people. Um, especially if you're coming at it from a from a Christian worldview, because it's something that will definitely challenge your beliefs. So what I would ask everyone is to apply the same kind of historical, uh, I guess, reasoning that we would apply to any other historical figure to this. So uh, looking at you know, primary sources, secondary sources, and, and evaluating it from there. So um, that's the, the very brief um, overview of, of where I stand, and I'm happy to pass the mic. You bet. Jonathan, if you'd like to go next. Oh, I think we, we got you on mute. Let me see if I... Uh... Sorry. Sorry about that. I was no on mute. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. Um, thankful for Chris and Callan for coming on to discuss this important topic. Um, I'm Jonathan McClatchy. I am a Christian. And I am a Christian because I am persuaded by the public evidence that Christianity is objectively true. Um, I think that the scientific evidence for the existence of God is, is overwhelming, and I think the, the evidence for the historicity of Jesus of Nazareth is, is very, very compelling, as is the evidence for his resurrection from the dead. Um, and so that's um, some of the reasons why I'm a Christian. Um, I am persuaded that the, the Gospels are substantially reliable reports. Um, and biographies of the life and times of Jesus of Nazareth. Um, we also have test, uh, so there's that testimony of the historical existence of Jesus Christ. We also have the testimony of the Book of Acts, which is a sequel to the Gospel of Luke. Luke, of course, was a traveling companion of Paul, and uh, he also, of course, affirms that Jesus was an historical person. We also have the Epistles of Paul. There's 13 letters written by the Apostle Paul, who was um, 
who was not a disciple of Jesus, but he was um, a companion of many of the people who knew Jesus personally. Uh, he was in particular a companion of Jesus' own uh, biological brother, James, and Jesus' closest disciple, Peter. And of course, Paul affirms that Jesus was an historical person. Um, and so that too is, is, is quite compelling evidence for the historical existence of Jesus of Nazareth. And I'm sure we'll get into those and unpack them in more detail as the discussion progresses. You bet. Thank you very much. And Callan, thanks for being here. First time, I think. Yeah, it is my first time. I'm glad to be here. My position is that Yeshua, which is Jesus in Aramaic, Jesus kind of actually sounds pretty weird to me when um, you say it because, well, just etymological reasons. But anyhow, I hold that the secular, um, the hostile sources, so to speak, which are the sources who are writing sort of not from a Christian viewpoint are sufficient within combination of other historical evidence, such as the arisal of various sects of Christianity and whatnot to establish that there was more than likely some person who originally had some teachings whom we call Jesus. And therefore Jesus is a historical character. You bet, thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, with that, we'll just go right into the open dialogue. So. Thanks again for being here. Cool. So one thing I actually want to clear up that you just said, um, Jonathan, you, you mentioned mm -hmm. um, that there was, um, there's eyewitness testimony, but, but mm -hmm. one thing that the historical evidence actually shows is there's actually no contemporary testimony at all. Uh, the earliest writings on Jesus being the, the epistles of Paul, which were from the sort of roughly the 50s AD. Um, and of the epistles, you mentioned 13, but only seven of them are historically viewed by the majority of scholars as being authentic. So there's two that are certainly up in the air. Um, they, you know, it's, it's a bit of a split as to whether they're authentic or not, uh, but there's certainly um, not all 13 that are attributed to Paul were written by Paul. So that's probably, that's probably the first okay. thing that I, I would clarify, mm -hmm. and, sure. and I'm happy to have that conversation. Um, as can we, far can we, as can we discuss yeah. that and then move on to the next point? Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, so, in the first point, um, we have to be careful to define what we actually mean by a contemporary source. Do we mean a source that was written during the life of Jesus of Nazareth, or do we mean well, a source I, that was I, written by someone who lived during the time of Jesus of Nazareth? I, I think, for the for the sake of the, the discussion, I, I would probably use the same level that you would for any any kind of primary source. Historic. So, so, for so, example, so at, um, at the time I was so, yeah. so something that was an actual witness to the event, not a not a second hand. So source. you mean a primary source, right. basically? So, quite, uh, literally, a, quite literally, a primary source. If it's a primary okay. source, um, I, I would accept that as evidence. Well, okay. But so you don't accept secondary John. resources. Uh, well, it so, depends on the quality of the secondary resource. There's, there's there's secondary resources and there's secondary resources. So do do you know um, how many sources from the first century mentioned Josephus? From the first century mentioned Josephus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Josephus, his writings were in the 90s, I believe. So they probably wouldn't, right. I couldn't give you an exact number, but um, his, his, histories, his histories were in the 90s. So, well, it wouldn't be zero because he, his book was published in the 90s. So it was. No, he wrote, I mean, we have, a, we have his own testimony that existed. We don't have any contemporaries yeah. of Josephus that mentioned that he existed. But nonetheless, we sure. know he existed. So clearly, the, um, even if that were the case, which it isn't in the case of Jesus of Nazareth. Um, if there were no contemporaries that wrote about his existence, that would not be an argument for him not existing. Well, well his, the writings of Josephus would be considered a primary source, same as the writings of Herodotus would be considered okay. a primary so, source. So um, the Gospel of John, for example, the Gospel of John is written, I would argue, by um, a disciple of Jesus. Um, and would, so that I is would, a primary I would source. argue against that because the, the historical dating actually puts that in the second century. So if oh, he was no, a disciple of Jesus, then I mean, he'd be over 100 years old, probably, at the time he wrote it. Okay, okay. What's the historical evidence for it in the second century? Well, there's no, there's absolutely nothing that would indicate it was written in the first century. What's the it, evidence it, that it was written in the second century? The evidence that it was written in the, first, in the second century, mm -hmm. but there's absolutely nothing from the first century that reference, I, references I think it. what we're also asking for here is what sort of linguistic evidence could you establish that shows that these texts were not written. Like languages tend to evolve and change over time. So if, for example, if the gospels were all written in modern Greek, we would be able to date it to present day. So what about the gospels in terms of like linguistic structure and whatnot, make it to where 
it couldn't have been written in these centuries. Oh, it's yeah. Well, it was it was written in Greek. It was written in the Greek of the time, and there is evidence from the second century that the Gospel of John existed in the second century. Um, I know there is some contention. I'll, I'll say that the possibly so it would have had to have been before century. the second century. No, no. If if the if earliest, it was in the second if, century. If the earliest um, manuscripts we've got and the earliest references to it's it not from the second it. century. I mean, but, the, the earliest manuscripts of Cornelius Tacitus and Imperial Rome are not to like 1000 AD. So does that make Tacitus writing in 1000 AD? <laughs> no, well, Tacitus, he, his writings are from 117. There is actually earlier right, but we don't um, have manuscripts copies of Tacitus. From, from, we don't have copies of, ta of Tacitus from the second century. We only have about two manuscripts from Tacitus on which Annals Imperial Rome is based. Yeah, but we, we, we do have referencing to Tacitus and his writings. We have reference, but we also have references, and we have references to, to John in the second century. Um, but John yeah, was writing I'm, around... I'm, 80, I'm not arguing, I'm not arguing for the second right. century. And, and, and look, right, I'm but, even willing to concede late first century, because there is, there is some contention between scholars that could be anywhere sort of between about 90 and 120. Um, but So if you concede yeah, first century... Then Look, and let's say, I'll, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it this way: if if you guys can provide me with evidence that there is writings from, um, or the book of John was written in the first century, I'm happy to. Well, you've already show me the evidence. you've already conceded that it could, was probably written in the first century. So no, no, no I haven't. That I haven't would be within. That. I thought I you did. Haven't conceded that at all. No, no. I, I said that it, it, it. There is some contention that it may have been. It may have been written in the first century uh the late first century in the 90s but the general consensus is that no it's from, not from historian it is i'm telling you it is no, it's not it is the the, the is. consensus dating for the gospel of john is between 1995 c so 1995 c okay all right, right. for the which sake of the second century argument, which would put us sake, within 100 years of jesus's death for the sake of this argument, I am happy to say 90 to 95 CE um, because there is some contention about, about that. I did say that. But even then still, we're talking 60 years after the death uh, of someone who, you know, in a time yeah, where people yeah. lived to be an average age of 50. So what age would that put John at? So um, we have evidence of people living much longer. We have evidence of people living longer. For example, um, Josephus. Josephus was born in 37 AD. Oh, sorry. He, yeah, he was born in 37 AD and he died around 100 AD. Um, so, you know, Josephus um, lived to be fairly old. Um, yeah, well, an, an average age is in a cap, yeah. Yeah, Poly Polycarp of Smyrna. Polycarp of Smyrna also, um, he famously said in, in the letter of the Smyrnian church documenting his martyrdom, he says, 86 years have I served Christ and he never did me any wrong. How then can I blaspheme my king and savior? So people, I mean, the, the, the average life expectancy is is um, significantly depleted by the high infant mortality rate. Um, and no, so no, actually, no, that's not, not correct. The average uh, lifespan for a surviving adult in that era was around about 48 to 50 years. That's for a surviving adults. So that's taking infant mortality rates out of it. What's your source? Um, actually, that's directly from Richard Carrier. Um, I'd have to um, check his source. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm just looking at the source. Hmm. Um, but in any case, we have, we have evidences of... Uh, individuals living much longer i mean just even oh, okay. so it's so it's not an argument in any case you can even argue i mean there's a minority of scholars that argue for an earlier dating of john um like daniel wallace for example puts john in the 50s ad um and i i think that there's some good arguments for putting it at least pre-70 for example in john chapter um five and verse two um we read, uh, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which is five roofed colonnades. Uh, notice it uses the present tense. There are five colonnades by the sheep gate. And those colonnades, along with the entire temple complex, were destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. So, um, uh, I'd so, have, so to, have, to, I'd have to check. I'd have to check the original source for that. But um, yeah. And the original source is John chapter 5, verse 2. Yeah, but in, in the original context it was written. I, I don't know that verse off the top of my head. Okay, but, there, but there's a case to be made for, for dating John much earlier. But, than, than but, yeah, and, and there, there, is, there is a small amount of scholars that will say it was possibly earlier, but, it, but even then, I mean... I mean, it still, still talking... puts us... It puts us within one to two generations of Jesus, of a historical figure of Jesus. Yeah, but one, one to two generations doesn't... That's not an eyewitness account. 
Um, I mean, witness account. neither does anything we have about George Washington. I mean, or many other historical figures. How are you going to deny that Jesus exists, but Alexander because, the Great because does there's, exist? There's, there's primary sources um, relating to George Washington. Absolutely, there's records. The, the uh, British but what about Alexander the Great? Records. Alexander the so, Great. So I'm gonna, I'm there is, ask, there is um, uh, the, the Greeks were actually they're, they're probably the worst example to use because the Greeks of that era were actually um, very good record keepers. So they were good record keepers, but I mean, yeah, they were good record keepers. But the evidence for Alexander the Great's existence isn't exactly that plentiful from that area. How do you know it wasn't just many other different leaders who made the conquest up to India? Well, the evidence wouldn't suggest that. The the evidence, the, there's primary source evidence that suggests that this person exists. Which primary the, source? Well, there's coins with his head head on it for a start. That, that's a great there primary source. There are coins with, with... There are coins with, with the um, heads of the gods who you deny that are on it. Does, does that mean the gods exist? No, that would, be, that would be primary source evidence that the, uh, the gods were acknowledged at the time. There's a difference between acknowledging gods and a person. Right. But, but did Alexander the Great exist? Evidence says that. Does it really affect this argument or does it really well, affect my, my view on things? No, probably not. But there is, there is writings that the Greeks of that era, um, kept, I mean, the, it's, it's a little bit earlier, but the, the histories of Herodotus, I mean, that gives us an in-depth look at the, uh, the Peloponnesian War, which um, eventually led to the rise of Macedonia. But was Herodotus during Alexander's life? Was he uh, a primary he was, witness? He was just before, actually. So no, he wasn't. He wasn't. He was prior to Alexander's life, and it was the Peloponnesian War that led to the eventual rise of uh, Macedonia as the the great power. That's an inference there. That's not a historical eyewitness account of what Alexander the Great. No, it's it's prior to it. I didn't say it was. Right. So I, I was, again, I was what's using, your evidence I'm, I'm, that prior? What's your evidence <laughs> using Mythos's standards of history that Alexander the Great exists? I'm not here arguing for the existence of Alexander the Great. We're talking about Jesus. Right, but it, you're using it makes, it makes, it makes no history. I, I, I know bits and pieces. We have about not, the I'm not, same amount of evidence for Alexander the Great that we do for okay. Jesus. I know that an uh, atheist pastor uh, is getting a lot of challenge, which is good. Uh, we just want for sure to be, uh, I want to make sure you get plenty of time to respond to atheist pastor. Hmm. Yeah, look, it's... Um, I haven't come here prepared. I, I know bits and pieces. Uh, my area of history isn't um, Alexander the Great. I'm not here prepared to defend Alexander the Great. I don't have evidence or enough evidence that I can quote you for Alexander the Great. So um, I can't really lend to that discussion. I can lend to the discussion of Jesus because that's what I've come here prepared to discuss. Okay. Um, so I couldn't but discuss George Washington is... because... I, I don't study American history. I, you know, there's a lot of, you can throw a million names out there. We're, we're not here to discuss them. We're here to discuss. Except the Jesus. question isn't about those historical figures. The question is, how can you know that those historical figures existed, but yet deny somehow for some, for some well, sort of special okay. pleading cause that Jesus doesn't exist? Well, with Alexander the Great, no, I can't because I haven't researched it. I don't have any evidence because I haven't gone looking for the evidence. Okay, let, let, let me ask you a question to bring it back to to bring, to bring it back to the New Testament. Um, what what was what? How, how do you respond to um, unexplained allusions that, that appear in the Gospels? Um, for instance, in Mark chapter fifteen, mm -hmm. uh, verse twenty-one, uh, this is when Jesus is being led to his execution site, um, and it says they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. You're mm -hmm. Alexander and Rufus, right? They're just name dropped. In the narrative there in Mark. It mm -hmm. suggests that the original audience knew who they are, even though we do not. That sort of uh, unexplained illusion, I would argue, is, uh, uh, has a, is a hallmark of verisimilitude. Would you not agree? No. Why? No, I wouldn't agree. Why? Why? Because it's, it mentions two people in, in a book that was written. I mean, Mark was probably, I guess, to historically date that. Would you be happy to say it's the late 60s, early 70s? Uh, I, I would say that it's actually a date marked to the 50s, but it's neither here nor there. I'm non committal on the dating, and I don't think it's relevant. So, so, so once, once, once again, it's, it's a book that's written after it mentions that, that two people carried across. Okay. 
the, the, Bible, the, Bible, the, Bible, the Bible says a lot of things. There is in the, if there is in the incidental detail that's not relevant to the story in any way that uh, he was the father of Alexander and Rufus, who are evidently known or presumably known to the original audience. And so um, it seems that there's almost an invitation for the original audience to go and check it out with well, Alexander and, what and if, Rufus. Well, what if there was two people called Alexander and Rufus who wanted to insert themselves in the story, so they made their father this great hero who carried a cross? We, we don't know. That's the point. That's, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that's what happened, but, but we don't know. I mean, we're, we're talking, about, a, we're talking about something would, written years after. On that hypothesis, you would expect um, Alexander Rufus to feature in some narrative in the story, but there are just name drops. Like we're supposed to maybe, the maybe, that, maybe they maybe they were leaders of churches back then. Who knows? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just exactly. throwing. I'm throwing it's, a, it's a hypothetical. I'm. It's you're asking for why? Why would that be? Well, I'm, I'm giving you an example of why that could be. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, the the evidence for the substantial reliability of the Gospels is a cumulative argument. There's so many different lines of evidence that converge on the conclusion that the Gospels are based on eyewitness testimony. And that they are substantially trustworthy. Um, well, what, if they're trustworthy, why why are there contradictions? Um, for example, uh, the genealogy of uh, Jesus in Luke and Matthew is the obvious one. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I view the, the the genealogy in Luke as the genealogy of Mary, and the genealogy in Matthew is the genealogy of Joseph. And there's why, why would they do that? That wasn't the tradition at the time. There, there's no, there would be no reason for them to do that. In any and case, not, even not, even yeah. leaving that aside, I mean, we can even aside from that, we can demonstrate that the Gospels are at least minimally reliable to establish the existence of Jesus. No, I disagree. Yes, we can. No, we can't. So, and, that, and, that, and, that, and, that's, and that's where we're at. And look, you and I can sit back and go, yes, we can, no, we can't, yes, we can, no, we can't, and we're not going to get anywhere. I'd, I'd rather discuss, look, I'll, I'll ask you so, this. So let's, let's, I mean, you want to get into specifics. We can get into specifics. So, for example, take John chapter 6. This is the feeding of the 5,000 miracle. Um, and we get to verse 5, and it says, um, lifting a as I said, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so these people may eat? Uh, raise, immediately raises a question in the mind of the audience. Why um, why does um, Jesus turn to um, Philip here in particular? Because Philip's a fairly minor character in the Gospels. Um, why not say Judas Iscariot was in charge of the money bag or someone like that? Um, if you were six chapters later, just John chapter 12, we learn that Philip is from a certain town called Bethsaida. Um, just an incidental detail, completely different context from John 6. In Luke's account, Luke chapter 9, Luke also tells us about the feeding of the 5,000. And he doesn't mention that Jesus turns to Philip in that context at all. It just says he spoke to the disciples. But it does mention Bethsaida as the setting of the miracle story, which then explains and illuminates John 6, 5, that Jesus turned to Philip to ask for it to send people to buy bread because Philip's a local guy. He knows where the shops are to buy bread. So by putting pieces together from Luke 9, from John 6, from John 12, we can come up with a cogent explanation for why Jesus turns to Philip in John 6, 5. Um, and um, how would you explain that on the mythicist hypothesis? So, so what you're saying is John that was written potentially, we'll argue on the dates, but John was written after Luke. I don't think we'll argue that. So a, a story in John expands on a story in Luke. Okay, well, Matthew expands on Mark. and, and No, Luke that's and, that's not the point. In, in John chapter 6, there's no mention I'm, I'm, of... I'm trying, trying to work out what the point is. It's You're saying that there was, John goes into more detail about something that happened in Luke. So what? That, that that proves nothing. It just proves that it's an expansion on a story. No, in John 6, there's no mention of the side as saying the miracle story, um, but Philip is mentioned as the person to whom Jesus turns to ask where to send okay. people to buy bread. And John 6 doesn't even mention Bethsaida as Philip's hometown. That's in John 12. And it's okay. only in Luke 9 that doesn't mention Philip in that context at all. It mentions the event takes place of Bethsaida. That sort of pattern, that sort of interlocking of different sources is best explained on the historical on the historicist hypothesis than on, rather than on the mythicist hypothesis. No, I, do, I, I disagree. I, I don't think that actually goes to, I, I don't think even the, think it goes to the point that we, of the, of what we're discussing. It's, it's an expansion of a, it's basically there's there's two different versions of a similar story. One goes into details about one. So what? Well, that, that doesn't prove not, anything. Well, even like even if I grant that there's a contradiction, many if not almost every historical document from around that time contradicts itself. Like that's one thing about all of these texts is that the way when they were written, people weren't so much focused uh, on recording the history for in and of itself, but rather of also sort of adding their own touches to it. 
so to speak. Well, well, that, that could, so that, I don't I think, see I, I don't see necessarily right. I don't necessarily see any issue with having a contradiction at all because, again, we would have to throw out a huge amount of our historical record if we were to say if we were to say oh there's a contradiction guess we got to give up now. Right. I, I completely agree with what Colin has said because there's um, uh, there there's uh, there's historical contradictions in many ancient reports, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're substantially unreliable. So um, no, no, the, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But it also doesn't go to prove. Look, with the existence of Jesus, the the burden of proof. You keep is using this word proof. proof. What do you mean by historical proof here? Well, can I can I finish what I was going to say? And I. All right. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. The, 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 what I'm what I'm trying. Oh, sorry. So when it comes to the, it's not up to me to prove that Jesus didn't exist. If, if you guys provide me with evidence he did, uh, I'm happy to accept it. The burden of proof is on you making the claim that he existed. And from what I can see, looking at it from a purely historical point of view, as a historian, the, the evidence doesn't stack up. There's, there's no primary sources. There's no contemporary sources. The earliest writings we have are... Uh, there are sources within years. the first... They're the sources within the first two generations. Okay, so, so uh, could, I, could I write an eyewitness account of World War II? If you were in World War II and you were old enough, sure. Well, then you can go and you can interview and that would be called a secondary source. Absolutely, and that's what I'm saying, that these sources... A lot of, do you know sources. how much history is actually built off of secondary sources? Yes, I do. Then, so do you reject all secondary sources? No, I don't. So why do you reject the, the secondary sources? I reject. Well, I don't, I'm not saying I reject secondary sources, but but secondary sources. There's different standards of secondary sources, and you need to look at because secondary sources are such a broad, um, well, there's such a broad range. You, you can't evaluate all secondary sources as equal. The same as you can't evaluate all primary sources as being equal. You've got to actually evaluate the source in the context for when it was written and what it was. I mean, the secondary, sources have a, been a, secondary source, a secondary source on Jesus could be something that's written today. That could be a scholarly secondary source. No, it couldn't yes. be because at this point you would be writing from text, which are, and, and there, are, there would be a tertiary resource, if anything. Right. No, yeah. no. If, 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 if I were, if I were to, go and source a journal article from this year on the only way it could be a secondary Jesus, resource is, is, is if you had an eyewitness account right. Right. Just, to, just to be sure no. that he gets to finish no that's i i absolutely disagree and i think you'll find the majority of historians would not hold to that uh yeah i mean uh, i mean the gospel of luke is a secondary source because luke was not an eyewitness to jesus he was an eyewitness to paul and was a traveling companion to paul he was, he was not an eyewitness to jesus but he I didn't agree. He, but he was personally acquainted with people who were eyewitnesses. And so Luke is a, is a secondary source. But then if someone were to write a source that was based, that, that were, and he'd got his information from Luke, then that would be a tertiary source and so forth. Okay, right. no, I think, uh, no, well, I, 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 no, it's different, different definitions, I'd say. It's different definitions. Maybe it's a different thing in, I doubt it's different in the US and Australia, but, but a secondary source for me and, and where I study and, and the way we look at it is anything that's not a primary source anything that uh, so anything that would be a journal article anything that would be a book that would be written we would class as a secondary source but there's certainly different types of secondary sources and that's what i'm saying needs to be evaluated you couldn't you couldn't so what is your standard what, for a secondary resource to prove that jesus exists historically we're talking well, if, historical I had, if, I had, if i had a standard to prove that jesus existed i'd be arguing on the other you side. do because basic philosophy states that you're making the claim that the position that jesus doesn't exist that's a claim no. You I'm, need to back no, that up. I'm, I'm making I'm making the claim that I haven't been provided with adequate evidence. So what you're saying is you're existed. agnostic on Jesus. Hold on, one, one, sec one of, second. Uh, just to, well, just to be sure that atheist pastor gets a chance to respond. You, you can you can define it however you want. I'm not too I'm not too fussed. It doesn't change my view. I don't believe that there's evidence that Jesus existed, and I, I believe that the lack of evidence would probably indicate that he didn't. What 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 do you mean by evidence? Because it seems that there is a distinction between saying no evidence and insufficient evidence. Well, I mean, I, I don't, don't think believe... anyone could. I don't think even Carrier would maintain there's no evidence. No, no, of course not. But it's, you've got to evaluate the evidence that you've got there, and there's no contemporary evidence. There is nothing um, for at least twenty years. I mean, even the uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the the Essenes, um, they didn't mention anything about Jesus, and they were contemporary at the time. There's no contemporary. Um, sources the, the 
what's written in the Bible about uh, the, the character of Pilate is very different from, from other sources or what other sources would indicate about the character of Pilate, for instance. There's, there, there's a 20 year gap and there's no explanation for the 20 year gap. And, and even that 20 year gap, the first writing is from Paul who wasn't an eyewitness. So the Do gospel, you know if the gospel of Mark, which would be, let's say the gospel of Mark, I think it's pretty much agreed is the earliest um, of the gospels. That is the first actual writing claimed to be about the life of Jesus. Uh, and that is in the seventies. So we're talking 30 to 40 years after uh, and I know you say the 50s, but even if I were to grant you that and, and it was still 20 years, there is still a gap with absolutely no contemporary sources or writings for the person who was supposedly the greatest human to ever exist. That the same is, is true. Sense. I mean, there's no contemporary sources that speak about Josephus. There, Alexander the Great, there, um, his, well, I mean, the earliest extant biographers of Alexander the Great were Arian and Plutarch, who lived some 300 years after Alexander the Great passed away. Yep, so, there seems to be this sort of inconsistency within we, mythicist we, position, we, we, his we, historiography. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making any claim either way about Alexander the Great. I it's just you're being inconsistent. Hold on, one, so, one sec. Just forgive me. So okay. sorry, guys. <laughs> I, just wanna, every... uh, I just want to make sure Atheist Pastor gets to, uh, like, kind of the full time to respond, because it's it's challenging where it's like I kind of, in a way, to try to keep it relatively fair, I try to, I, McClatchy and, and Callan, you guys are in the tough spot of, to some extent, having a split time. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm not making any claim about Alexander the Great. I haven't researched Alexander the Great. That's not my area of history. Um, I am happy to research Alexander the Great and have a look and come back to you with my conclusion there. But, I mean, you can throw any name from history. At, at the end of the day, if I haven't researched it, I can't comment on it. I'm not going to comment on something that I have no knowledge on and pretend I'm an expert. No, but the point is that your argument against the historical Jesus is that the there's a time gap of 20 years between Jesus' death and the first written records of him. But mm -hmm. when it comes to someone like Alexander the Great, whom you take for granted existed, the earliest oh. extant biographies are some 300 years after his death. Oh, I'm banging my head against the wall here. I'm not making so, any position on that. Why, 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 if, if you guys want to schedule a debate about Alexander the Great, Awesome. Let's do that. Let's make it in a week's time and I'll do the research. I don't have a position on Alexander the Great. I, I have not researched Alexander the Great. I know bits and pieces from basic history about Alexander the Great. I'm not may having a position on whether he existed or not. Um, I have no position because I haven't done the research. What okay. about uh, Caesar I'm not here to argue it. Sorry? Okay, so well, there's also Caesar Augustus, uh, Caesar Augustus. Would you deny that he exists? Who do you know? That in the ancient world, aside from this Jesus mythicism stuff, that you hold does not exist, but that does exist, but there is not as much evidence, or the evidence is all also secondary. Secondary evidence. Well, if secondary it was secondary sources, I I wouldn't really hold any. I'm sorry, I'm not. So you're saying using only secondary sources? Who would I say existed in history? ancient history ancient because history. this is what we're ultimately discussing okay um i would have said pilot but i believe there's I, I believe there is actually primary sources for the existence of pilot um i really couldn't tell you uh, off the top of my head i couldn't tell you i'd have to i'd have to look in and, and uh, i mean there's oh, yeah no i i, I would so what hold, do you know I about ancient hold, history well, I, I st uh, well, which area of ancient history? It's it's a big thing. I mean, we're talking Rome. We're talking Rome, pretty ancient, much here. Rome, Midi, ancient, Midi. ancient Rome. I'm not an expert on ancient Rome. Okay, and but I'm not here to discuss is, ancient what, Rome. I'm here to discuss. Well, no, this is ultimately an extension of ancient Rome and what happened in ancient Rome with the with the rise of Christianity. It's very related. So, mm -hmm. the other thing also is would it would actually. The 20 year gap doesn't actually even seem to be that much of a problem here because we're also dealing in a society which isn't exactly literacy isn't the highest thing. So if everyone knows about Jesus already, then they're going to use it through oral communication. If it's through oral communication and only like the church to get things started up, then yeah, there's no need to write anything down. For, so that's not uh, exactly a so, so compelling dismissal of that evidence. Everything else got written down at the time. 
There, there's no. the, record, the records around that era are actually pretty decent. Yeah, by the elite class. Okay. Not by because, contrary to popular belief, not all most Romans, and probably those also, most Romans who were able to write stuff, were usually came from noble families. It was not a. Um, it's not like how they like to portray it in the movies. It was a very stratified society. Most Romans were were illiterate. Yeah, I'm not going to argue that. I, I don't know and enough so, about it, so I'm not going to argue it. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that. That that I would imagine that would be correct. So why um, would they write something down if they're trying to appeal to the common person who is illiterate? Why are they trying to appeal to the common person? To spread religion. Christianity as a religion well, then, well, spread. Then, well, then, then why bother writing it down thirty years later? Because things, L- literacy rates didn't changed. suddenly jump up in thirty years. Because circumstances changed. People got convinced, and people who were literate eventually got convinced, and they decided mm, it's time to write this stuff down. Okay, time so to then? iron out the philosophy and pl- and combine it with Platonism and whatever. Yeah, it's no. Nah, so you're applying this. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, furthermore, um, we have evidence of sources concerning the life of Jesus that predate the Gospels. For example, in Luke chapter 1, Luke opens his Gospel by saying, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the Word have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. So that implies that there were sources concerning Jesus' life predating the Mark Mark and Matthew for a start, plus the the epistles of um, written by Paul. They all predate predate Luke. But he says, uh, and as much as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, it suggests that there were sources concerning the life of Jesus which which are now lost to us that we no longer have today. Well, and, and the ones that were thrown out by the church in the you know in the early days, there was a lot, a lot of different gospels and a lot of different takes on Jesus. There was a lot of different, um, you know, narratives. I mean, you only need to look at the Gnostics, which were I, I can say well after, um, right, literature. well after, and, uh, and well, well after. But but well I mean, after. that's just that's just to use an example. There there was no shortage of people writing about um, Jesus. But I mean, if we if we're just to go off the biblical side of things, well. Um, you've got the, the Pauline epistles, which were obviously written to the, the various churches, of, of which I, I would argue seven of which, um, and, and most historians would, would agree that seven of which are actually attributed to Paul with a, with a couple in the grey and, and a few that, that probably weren't, but even those potentially were written prior, just not by Paul. Um, you've got Mark, you've got Matthew. I'm not, not arguing that people were writing about Jesus prior to Luke. I, I think that the evidence would suggest that that is fairly the case. Okay. So, so let's, let's talk about Paul. Um, since you mentioned Paul, um, I mean, Paul has a lot to say about Jesus um, and he was closely associated with Jesus' brother, James and Jesus was a disciple, Peter. So is, are the writings of Paul not substantial evidence that Jesus existed? No, he wasn't an eyewitness, and he, he never claims. Okay, in Galatians one, he he says that the knowledge that he was given wasn't from wasn't from people; it was from revelation. Uh, okay, um, James uh, James the the brother. Uh, that's that's not the the actual brother as as in we would the term that we would use for for brother as in a, you know a biological brother. That's that's like, as in the you know. You're, you're my brother is in a, a Christian brother. Think, things you like realize that. that's a very French minority position, don't you? I'm not aware of anyone who argues that outside of mythicist circles. Okay, I, I have actually heard okay. that. Um, I've, I've heard that. I, I heard that argued when I was studying theology, uh, in, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a Christian setting. So, um, in Galatians chapter one, he says, "But I saw none of the other apostles except." So he says, "Sorry, start from verse 18." And after three years, I went out to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him 15 days. So Cephas is Peter but I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. So he, he calls James the Lord's brother so as to distinguish him from Peter, who was not the Lord's brother. But if he's using brother in a generic sense, then he would also refer to Cephas as the Lord's brother. Well, it depends on, you didn't just, no, because there was the baptism and, and leadership structure. So that's, 
you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too on that it's people didn't just become a christian instantly become a brother it was there was a period that they went through it's like the for lack of a better term an initiation before they were baptized uh and then at that point when they were in leadership they were considered a brother the same as you've got brothers within the catholic church now or you know father or you know it doesn't literally mean a father it's more a, a rank or an authoritative position you you also have um i mean you have the reference to the brothers of jesus in the gospels um and, and the book of acts including uh, mm -hmm. james who becomes leader of the jerusalem church in Acts 15. um we also have the reference to Jesus' brothers in 1 Corinthians 9, where he says um, uh, that um, do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, as, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas. Um, so the brothers of the Lord is is a is it seems to me to be most plausibly understood as as the as the biological brothers. But even leaving leaving that aside, um, even granting that point. It's still incontrovertible that the Apostle Paul was personally acquainted with with those who personally knew Jesus of Nazareth, including Jesus' closest disciple Peter, right? Well, well, he was he was acquainted with, or he claims to have been acquainted with um, Peter and the apostles. But there's a difference between even, apostles and disciples as well. Well, even if he wasn't, he's still within the time of Jesus. That's the other thing. Well, no, it was after. That was, no, he was alive Jesus. during Paul, 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 never, Paul never met Jesus, but he was a well, contemporary no, he never, he was a contemporary of Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. He was. So Paul, he would have been, yeah. he would have heard about this Jesus guy who's around and he would have met people who are even just sort of even maybe not disciples, but just common folk. And they would tell him about this guy named Jesus. And that would be in itself a primary um, source for Paul to uh, yeah. work on that. In, states in that the proposition no he denies that yeah he can deny it all he wants the, the facts of living in judea may change that well, so well, we can't we can't use him as a primary source if he's denying it i mean if, if he's saying that it was all all everything he knows about jesus is through revelation uh that, that's that's i don't see any reason why not i don't see any reason why not he he doesn't he didn't grow up he didn't come up in a vacuum he was in a society, in a society that had this person named Jesus who was around preaching. He would have heard of him, even if it was just through word of mouth. So but that that's in not, itself. That's not, that's not what he claims, though. I, this isn't about what Paul claims. It's about the existence of Jesus. I've, I've, Jesus. Completely, I've completely lost your point. Sorry. That Paul... Because yeah would have based his stuff that paul didn't make up jesus because he would have he would have at least heard about jesus while still being in judea and Possibly. in order for him to hear about jesus he would have he would have had to have been he would have had to have how to put this in order to heard about jesus there would have needed to have been some sort of stimulus there which means that some guy named jesus yeshua was walking around and preaching yeah, but that's not what Paul claims. Paul's I don't care claiming. what Paul. I came up. I care about the historicity here. I'm not. Okay, but you're, I'm you're, not debating you're, you're, you're what Paul making, said. Paul can you're, say you're, you're whatever making, you're he making, wants. You're making you're making assertions based on what Paul knew, which are different from what Paul claims. I mean, does Paul, Paul not mention Jesus? Yes, he he does, but he also says that it was through divine revelation that he learned about Jesus, not through eyewitness accounts it was through divine revelation it was, it was, it was, it was from divine revelation that he learned the gospel right that's in galatians 1 not about mm -hmm. jesus um so in galatians chapter 1 it says for i would have you know brothers that the gospel that was preached to me is not man's gospel for i did not receive it from any man nor was i taught it but i received it through a revelation of jesus christ that's not talking that's about point. whether jesus was an historical figure it's talking about the gospel which is the revelation the is evangelion about right? christ yeah okay the good news about jesus um yeah but it, it's, it's not talking there about whether jesus was an historical figure or not because we know that prior to his act nine damascus road conversion experience he was going persecuting christians do you think he had never heard of jesus before i have no idea because he doesn't mention that he had but he's the information about jesus is through divine revelation this, um, is, this no. is the problem with the Bible. It contradicts itself in so many different places. It's Paul hard to keep up with it. 
Paul claims on multiple occasions to be personally acquainted with the apostles. And he's not the only person, he's not the only writer that we have that claims this. I mean, the author of Acts, namely Luke, is a yeah, traveling yeah. companion of Paul and was personally acquainted with the apostles and knew Jesus. So you have, you know, sources that are close up to the facts. Um, and so that is very strong evidence that Jesus existed. Well, well Acts is more of an account of the life of Paul. So it's yeah, a history. But you're missing the, the point. Paul. The point is. No, no, I, the, I, 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 get the, I, get, I get the point you're making. I just disagree with it. Okay, but why do you disagree with it? Because if we're talking about Acts, it's not actually an account of Jesus. That's an account of Paul. I mean, that's an account of Paul's journey. To now, if if, if I grant that Luke knew Paul, I, I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to grant that. Um, but that doesn't indicate that he, he knew any all, of the he, disciples, he any anyone who was an eyewitness. Well, let's have a look. So Acts 21, for instance, mm -hmm. Acts 21. He says. When we had come to Jerusalem, this is verse 17, when we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. Uh, so um, the Jerusalem eldership were the apostles. Peter and James were the leaders in, of the Jerusalem church. Does it and say that? These are the very... Does it say, does it say that in Acts 21? Uh, that these, it's known historically that Peter and James were the elders of the Jerusalem church, yes. How? Where? From the book of Acts, um, or the Acts 15, for example. Okay, but, um, you quote, but you're quoting Acts 21. What's the time period between Acts 15 and Acts 21? It's the same author, right? So in yeah, Acts, okay, but, but it, it didn't all occur in a day. There, there's a time span so, that it goes over. What's your point? Well, you're saying that you, you're picking and choosing here. You're saying that it, it, it's evidence that they met with Peter, but it doesn't mention Peter. It mentions James. I'm happy to say that they went and they met with James. And all the brothers and are James and James is a brother who is essentially as a, as a, as we went over before. I think we've got the disagreement on whether that's biological or as in a, you know a title, um, and and that's something that people who have probably researched it a lot more than us are still discussing and, and arguing. Um, but that doesn't once again this none of this is proving the any eyewitness accounts of Jesus. So in, in Acts fifteen, it's it speaks about. Um, the Jerusalem Council, verse 6, the apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter, and after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my uh, mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us, etc. Um, and so, Peter and James are presented to us as the leaders in the Jerusalem church. In Acts 21, he's, he says that he goes into James and all the brothers are present, indicating that um, he had personal acquaintance with the apostolic community. Okay. And he, they were... I, I, I'm, not argue, I'm not arguing that, that in the 80s or 90s or whenever this is, um, that... It's if totally Paul was still alive, I, you know, or Luke or whoever met with the apostles in Jerusalem. I've got no issues with that. There's a difference, though, between apostles and disciples. Where the apostles don't necessarily refer to the, the 12 disciples who no, I agree. are supposed to have walked around with Jesus. It's the, the apostles. It, it's, a different, it's a different thing. It's, it's a, it's a but, common misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree apostles. Is, sorry, I, I agree apostles is a broader term, but it's clear that Peter and james were eyewitnesses how uh because of, of the gospels and acts okay so where where are the writings of peter or the the gospel of peter well Mark, peter is thought to be and there's some quite good evidence for it, and peter is thought to be the source behind the gospel of mark okay but there's no evidence to that uh, yes, there is. Um, and, he, but, and, and look, I'm, I'm happy with suggestions, but even then still, 30 to 35 years later. Well, or, I mean, the gospel... 20 or 20 I mean, to 35, I mean, the, somewhere in that. I mean, the dating of the gospels is notoriously difficult. I mean, scholars are very divided on when the gospels are written. So I prefer I to be non-committal. So, so I don't know why you keep coming back to the dating of the gospels. Um, because because they're not contemporary. One one thing. Okay, even if we go off the earliest, it, even if I were to grant you twenty years, which which I don't, but even if I were to, for the sake of the argument, 
there's a gap. There is an absolute gap between when Jesus of Nazareth would have died and then when anything was written about him, as far as an eyewitness account, excluding, you know, but I, we already went over. Say, yeah. We already went yeah. over that most of the ancient and, and, world. And we keep is coming back to it. <laughs> We keep yeah, because they were, and also the records aren't, as it turns out, the records that come from that area, come from Jerusalem, are actually pretty shoddy. According to who? Right, yeah, it's true. It's not true. Like, it is. produce them. <laughs> then go, by all means, go ahead and produce the records. I, okay, I'll just pull them out of my back pocket, but that that's not the historical consensus I mean, they're, they're, at all. Yes, it is, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, it's not. Most, it's not. most of the first century literature has been lost. Um, I mean, the, the, the main source for first century Judea is Flavius Josephus. Um, there's also some other first century Jewish writers like Pyle of Alexandria. Um, but uh, I mean, the, the vast majority of what was written in the first century is no longer with us. It's, it hasn't. The, the, the Romans were notoriously good record keepers. Uh, that's what popular imagination thinks. But, and while that may have been the case in, uh, in Roma, which is the capital, when it came to the other parts of the of the empire, administration could be really shoddy. Okay, so, they were an ancient so, empire, just like uh, many uh, countless others across the world throughout history. They may have developed we're, the we're, cancels, we're, but we are not going to get anywhere if we keep doing the whole yes, no, yes, no, back and forth. It's, there, there's things that clearly we're we're not agreeing on. Um, I'm saying that, and, and I'm sure we're not going to spend the next five hours pulling sources out. I'm happy to provide. As, Many sources as you as you would like after. Um, I I disagree, and I I would say that the Romans certainly would have had record of an insurgent who came into Jerusalem and and got the whole town into a a, a fit about um, you know where where they insisted that he be crucified. There, there would be I, I would have to. No, there wouldn't be. He was a common criminal, as far as the Romans were concerned. He's not worthy of the time of consideration. You think the Romans give a damn about criminals? We want to. What I want to do is. I kept we'll, records. We'll be going into the Q and A in just a minute, but I do want to give uh, atheist pastor the last word. As a, uh, it's been. Uh, it's been I, I kind of, to be honest, I, I was worried that sometimes the kind of the heathen and the atheist will kind of team up against the Christian. It's, uh, I, I did not know. Uh, it's, clearly, it's been uh, pretty clear that Callan and, and Jonathan are in agreement um, in, in disagreement with Atheist Pastor. So I do want to give you plenty of time, Atheist Pastor, to uh, you know kind of draw together any of the threads, and then we will go into Q&A. Sure. Look, I, I guess I've probably covered most things. I'm, I'm happy to go to the Q&A. It's, it's basically my position is there isn't contemporary evidence. Um, there's contemporary evidence of other people existing at the time. There's no contemporary evidence of Jesus. So the burden of proof is on the people who claim that he existed to say he existed. Uh, what concerns me is that the first writings were at least 20 years later and they weren't eyewitness accounts. Um, and then the the gospels you know at at best were 25 years but probably started around about 35 to 40 years after the character of jesus would have died and at a time where as as we've covered you know literacy rates weren't high uh, it's a lot of word of mouth um it's just not a reliable source gotcha i know that jonathan and kellen you probably have a a round in the chamber ready to fire, but I do want to go to Q&A just because we have to stop somewhere. And so thank you all for this really interesting discussion. It's been a true pleasure. And thanks everybody for your donations to the Children's Burn Fund as uh, I had a lot of good, good number of super chats come in. And so 100% of those super chats will be going to the Children's Burn Fund. You still have time to fire them out. And also we cover the 30%. So, you know, YouTube takes their... 30% uh, out of the super chats. And we just use past super chats to kind of like fill in that 30%. So literally, if you if you send a $5 super chat, $5 will be going to the child, uh, the children's burn fund. And with that, we'll jump right into these super chat questions. So thanks for your super chat, Stephen Steen. We really appreciate it. He says, James James's good looks are absolutely not a myth. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. Um, really unnecessary. You're married, Stephen. Okay. 
Thanks for your uh, thanks for your super chat donation from and it, uh, these are a little scrambled, so I promise I'll I'll catch yours if I if it looks like I'm skipping around. Uh, we did have one. This one looks like it's one of the few for Jonathan, and uh, you guys can always respond if it's a comment because super chats allow people to make comments as well as questions during the question and answer. Uh, you can respond, but you don't have to. This person says any evidence that is not the fables of the Bible, I can stop this with a Genesis verse, but won't as it will cause grumpy people. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm aware that some apologists like to use some of the secondary or tertiary secondary, uh, some of the external secular sources, such as Flavius Josephus, who in volume 18, and volume 20 of Antiquities of the Jews mentions Jesus of Nazareth. And there's a famous passage in volume 18 of Antiquities called the Testimony of Labianum, which is famously contested as to the degree to which it's been interpolated by a later overzealous Christian scribe. Um, the section in volume 20, which deals with the martyrdom of James, the brother of Jesus, is, is more widely accepted as, um, as genuine. Um, Cornelius Tacitus, writing about 110 AD, also mentions Jesus in connection with uh, the persecution of Christians under the Emperor Nero following the great fire that broke out in Rome in AD 64 that Nero blamed the Christians for. Uh, and there's also um, Lenny the Younger who mentions Jesus um, in connection with um, his letter to the Emperor Trajan asking advice on how best to interrogate Christians. Um, I personally don't make that a part of my case for historicism because to me it only really demonstrates what that they had a familiarity with what Christians in the first and early second century were saying. And um, and we already know that from the New Testament. So it doesn't really add much to the to the argument in my opinion. Um, however, we do have, one way that you can argue from external secular sources is to argue for and points of contact between the Gospels or Acts and external secular sources, um, which actually can illuminate or corroborate details in those historical documents. For instance, um, uh, take an, an example. Um, in uh, Mark, hey, let's go to um, Mark chapter 10. Um, in Mark chapter 10, we have Jesus giving teaching on divorce, and it says, um, in verse 10, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And this, of course, raises an, a, a question that a lot of skeptics bring up. Namely, the Jewish law made no provision for a man to divorce, uh, sorry, made provision for a man to divorce his wife, but no provision for a wife to divorce her husband. And um, and so it's it's often supposed or proposed that um, that the... And that Mark here betrays his ignorance of Jewish law, and he's in fact a Gentile, or perhaps he's deliberately fudging Jesus' teaching to make it more suitable for a Roman audience where a female can initiate divorce proceedings. But it turns out that if you look at the historical context of what was going on at that time, um, uh, Jephlavius Josephus reports that um, Herodias uh, took it upon herself to confound the laws of her country to divorce her first husband, namely Philip, uh, in order to marry Herod Antipas. So Philip was the younger brother of Herod Antipas, um, and where was Herod Antipas tetrarch? He was tetrarch of Galilee, the very place where Jesus gave that teaching. And, and so histor um, historical points of contact between the Gospels and external secular sources can act as, as verifications of the Gospel account. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Next up, appreciate your patience, folks. I'm skipping around here, like a chicken with its head cut off. Okay, fair enough. Here we go with the next one. Uh, let's see, Uncivil Skeptic, thanks for your support. They said like and sub to support the channel. And I'd say if, if you're uh, if you're like, ooh, I can't quite do super chats for one reason or another, one way of supporting the stream is just liking it as it's also kind of helping get the word out about the Children's Burn Fund. So we, again, have that uh, linked in the description. And so thanks for that encouragement. Holy Skepticism. Uh, said thanks for donating to a good cause. Well, thank you for donating to a good cause. Uh, thanks for your super chat, Michael Dresden. They said, uh, okay, so some of these things, like, this is where atheist pastor, if you, you don't have to respond, or if you want to take a jab at them, Michael Dresden says, this is why internet atheism is a joke. He's a lot of internet atheism is a joke. I, I agree. <laughs> um, it's probably more frustrating for us on the atheist side than uh, 
than those who aren't. But uh, there's also some good stuff. And just because you don't agree with something doesn't mean you need to, you know, I guess, disrespect the person's right to hold that view. Gotcha. Thanks very much. Next up, Skeptic Wiz. Thanks for your super chat. They said, Richard Carrier is not, in all capital letters, a primary source. I don't know if anybody... Uh, I, I agree. It's <laughs> definitely not that. a primary source. Gotcha. But, but no, it's, I don't think anyone ever suggested that. Gotcha. Maybe he made credible source. <laughs> uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll very, disagree on that one. Very, very clever, Jonathan. We'll, we'll disagree little, on that one. It's a little zinger in there. Uh, uncivil skeptic, thanks for your uh, super chat. They said, Jesus mythicism equals atheist fundamentalism. <laughs> Some of these uh, are aggressive. Uh, that's fine. Look, it's to me, whether or not a, a historical person called Jesus existed, it actually doesn't affect um, my lack of belief in, well, sorry, I, I won't say it doesn't affect my lack of belief because it'd be just one step closer to a belief that there is something, you know, that there is a God because, you know, it would confirm a part of it. But but really, it's if, if the evidence is presented, I'm, I'm happy. It's, I, I'm not holding a view that, my mind can't be changed. It's my, my view is I just haven't seen enough evidence. So if someone out there wants to call me a fundamentalist, good luck. Present me with the evidence and change my mind. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Next up, thanks for your question, Duncan Reed. Uh, they said 100% funds from Super Chats will help burn victims. That's right. And thanks for your donation. Next up, Stupid Horror Energy said... There's an entire section on the contemporary sources for Alexander the Fabulous on his Wikipedia. I don't know if she's trolling or serious. Can you tell? Trolling. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Ali B, thanks for your super chat. They said best debate channel on YouTube's. Thanks for that. I don't know if that's true, but we appreciate your kind words. They said keep it up, James. Happy New Year when it comes. Appreciate that. Thanks for your support. Arnie Rorvik. Thanks for your super chat. They said, for James's jacket, the Adonis of fabric and content. That's very sweet of you. This is, uh, I appreciate that. You get this from the, the thrift shop. You can, you'd be surprised if you can get a thrift shop. Holy skepticism. <laughs> Thanks for your super chat. Um, serious, great deals. They said, agreed. Jesus mythicism is atheist. Okay, it's got another one. Atheist fundamentalism. You can, I'm going to, that's the last one of that I'm going to read. That one kind of, somebody started, we got duplicates, but. You can respond to atheist pastor or you can ignore them. That's fine. If people want to call me a fundamentalist, that's up to them. I'm, I'm not too fussed. People can call me whatever they like. Gotcha. I appreciate your stoic personality. Uh, stupid, let's see. Digital Demonic Davros. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Let me know if I didn't. Thanks for your super chat donation. They said, any evidence that is not... Oh, we got that one. That's embarrassing. Stupid whore energy. That's how she likes to call herself. Don't ask me. She says, I bet 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 through 8 is an interpolation. Don't at me. I don't understand that. But So she is, for some reason, she thinks 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8 is an interpolation. Jonathan, any words for Sarah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, provide me with some evidence. I'm not aware of a single manuscript where 1 Corinthians 15 is missing. Uh, and so you would have to demonstrate that there's some evidence for that. Gotcha. Appreciate that. But so what you're saying is she would need to provide the evidence because she's made the claim? Right. Exactly. Okay. Just wanted to clear that up. Yeah. Cool. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Thanks, uh, Stephen Steen, up to his own trollish ways, uh, as always. He says, this is why mythicism is the young earth creationism of atheism. <laughs> So you don't have to respond to that. He's going for he's going for blood. You don't have to give. I, I actually I actually like that. That's I'll, I'll I'll give credit. That's quite funny. I like that. Very nice, uh, General Ballsack. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, thanks for your question. They said, atheist pastor, what do you consider a primary source in the ancient world? Um, something that is a contemporary writing. So I guess an example would be Herodotus, 
um, writing the histories. Um, that would be a contemporary account and a primary source for the Peloponnesian War. Um, say a coin with Julius Caesar's head on it would be a contemporary, uh, sorry, contemporary, sorry, it's, it's very early in the morning here. Um, that would be a primary source, um, something, something that's a physical source, of course, uh, something like that. Gotcha. For Thanks. examples, yeah. Thanks very much. Next up, Sentinel Apologetics. He has three, I think these are all quotes from, nope, they're not. These are, so they're three different scholars. One is from John Crossan. So John Dominic Crossan, in other words, in his book, Jesus, A Revolutionary Biography, boldly states, quote, that he was crucified is as sure as anything historical can ever be. Your thoughts, atheist pastor. Was he there? Gotcha. That's that's an opinion. I, I can I, I can drag expert opinions that are disagree. Um, but they, just just because someone has a you know a, you know claims that they believe something doesn't make it true. Uh, um, just him, him 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 saying him saying that it happened and it's beyond doubt. Okay, cool. We'll we'll present me with that evidence so I can have the same view that it's beyond doubt. Just, just a quick comment on just uh, one of the previous questions that compared mythicism to young earth creationism. Well, that's a classic Ken Ham question. Was he there? Were he there? Uh, just me. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, just because yeah, someone it was. I was being a bit cheeky with that one. Don't worry. <laughs> that's funny. Very nice. Uh, thanks for your. Um, thanks for well, your. Well, well picked up, by the way. <laughs> they. Uh, we got uh, Sentinel Apologetics said, sent two other scholar quotes. I can bundle these and then uh, Atheist Pastor, if you want to read them, or I should say respond to them. And I'm going to read them right now. One is question for the atheist. What is your response to the fact that Marcus Borg in his book, Jesus, A New Vision, also lists Jesus's execution as, quote unquote, the most certain fact about the historical Jesus? And, uh, well, maybe we'll just do these separately because they're technically separate points. Well, I, 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 haven't, I haven't read it. I'm not familiar with that person. I'm not arguing as to whether they're someone who is qualified. I just, I've never heard of them, so I can't comment on it. Gotcha. We appreciate that. Next up, thanks for your super chat from Sentinel Apologetics again. They said, Reginald Fuller, another scholar, says that, quote, Within a few weeks after the crucifixion, Jesus' disciples came to believe that this is one of the indisputable facts of history. Oh, I'm sorry. Technically, they said that within a few weeks after the crucifixion, Jesus' disciples came to believe this is that this is one of the undisputable facts of history. Okay, I did rewrite the question. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, according according to something that was written 40 years later. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Next up, appreciate uh, your super chat from Vibrant Brantley. Glad to see you, Vibrant Brantley. He's been hanging around here for a while. He says, I just want everyone to know my stance is not burning children. <laughs> Very funny. So what basically, uh, appreciate that, <laughs> Vibrant Brantley. Um, the children's burn fun is uh, you could say the children's children's uh, rehabilitation, the, the children's burn rehabilitation fund. So uh, very funny, Byron Brantley. Glad to have you here, bud. By the way, yesterday I used the soundboard. I don't know if anybody noticed this, but I like died of laughter. I used the soundboard right as Wotan was laughing, and it like perfectly synced with his own laugh. I think it was this one. <laughs> no, but not that one. This one. <laughs> That was it, that one. And so anyway, it made Wotan sound crazy. We love him. Wotan, if you're watching, we, we hope you're doing well. Next question, appreciate your question uh, from Slam RN. She says, what is atheist pastor, pastor's area of history? Primarily, uh, modern Australian. Gotcha. Thank so, you which, isn't, which isn't what we're talking about, but... I had studied a bachelor in theology and ministry. I didn't complete them, so I'll, I'll throw my hands up for that. Um, I deconverted before I could finish them, um, so I, I am familiar with, yeah, uh, I am familiar with the theology. Gotcha. Appreciate that. 
stupid whore energy. Thanks for your question. She said, here, I'll actually quote it. I must have missed something. I miss, is this must have been one of your earlier cats, Sarah. But she's, she's quoting uh, something that she previously re referred to. She says, contemporaries who wrote accounts of Alexander the Great's life, including Callisthenes, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing these, uh, Ptolemy and Nearchus, Aristobulus, and one Secretus. One Secretus. I think that's referring to her past super chat in which she said, there's an entire section on contemporary sources for Alexander the Fabulous on his Wikipedia. Oh, okay. So I think she's saying like, hey, we have better evidence to believe in Alexander because we have more contemporary sources. And then that last super chat was listing contemporary sources. How do you like them apples, Jonathan? Uh, I'm not aware of any extant contemporary sources of Alexander the Great. So um, what are the sources that you have? Gotcha. Thank you for your super chat, Sentinel Apologetics. So he was the one that quoted those three scholars before Marcus Berg, John Dominic Crossan, and Reg Reginald Fuller. He says, none of these scholars I quoted are Christian. Uh, if you want to respond, you can, atheist pastor, you don't have to. Uh, it's once again, it, 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 I'm not arguing that what the majority view is. I know that mythicism is the minority view. Um, it's the view I've come to based on on the evidence that I've got presented in front of me. Um, different different historians have different views. Um, there's on on pretty much any topic you you'll always struggle to find a consensus. I mean, even I guess biblical scholars struggle to find a consensus. That's why there's so many different denominations uh, of Christianity, and that's looking at the same source that. Yeah, the Bible. So it's if you can find me any field um, in history where everyone agrees unanimously, I would be very, very surprised. Gotcha. We... Uh, I think historians think that history exists. Uh huh. Yeah, there, there's your unanimous agreement. Okay. And what, what area? Yeah, okay. I always, I wasn't sure. I've had a, had a few today, so it's still pretty early for me. Gotcha. Well, we appreciate that uh, you have gotten up early with us. If I've missed any questions, forgive me, folks. I think I've gotten all of them. We have, wait, one more just came in. Uh, Sentinel Apologetics, he's coming after you. He says, debate conceded. Mythicism is bunk. Thank you. So if awesome. you can... provide Provide me with the evidence. Provide... Uh... Uh, it's, it's a pretty pretty simple pretty simple thing. Um, my position is, if I'm provided with the evidence, I'm happy to change my view. It, it, so I'm not. It's not a, a religious belief for me as to whether Jesus existed or not. Provide me with the evidence, and and I'll change my mind. But I haven't been presented with the evidence. That's what we've been doing over the last ninety minutes. <laughs> well, I think we've got a different different uh, different idea on what's been presented. But no, it's I, I haven't been presented with with any evidence. Gotcha. Well, we appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate everybody's super chat donations. We will put that receipt on Twitter to just for full transparency and record keeping. And uh, so, if you if you don't have Twitter and you want to see the receipt to know that we are actually keeping our promise, shoot me an email at modern day debate at gmail, and I will send it to you, even if it's your first time here. No problemo. We uh, are glad to have you all. So, thanks again to our speakers, though atheist pastor. Jonathan and Callan, it's been a pleasure to have you. It's been Thank fun. You. It's been good fun. And actually, I actually have enjoyed it. It's been good fun. Absolutely. So uh, thanks for coming by, folks. We hope you take care. We will see you soon as we've got more debates coming up. And wait, what? Actually, a couple really quick house cleaning things. We So Vosh is still interested in debating. However, as you may have heard, Hovind has backed out, doesn't want to debate in the tour anymore. Sargon of Akkad is mulling it over. So, I mean, I, I probably shouldn't have even said that. But it's it's exciting that we might uh, host that debate in place of the Bosch versus Hova, Hoven debate. And then we are excited that Nathan Thompson and Team Skeptic will be debating face-to-face -face in Dallas. That will be another live stream one. And then we are currently, if you know of a place in Austin, like a church or any empty building, we are kind of still looking for venues in Austin. We're, we're good for Dallas, but Austin, we're kind of still in the air on. 
We're also looking for a creationist on, well, creationist or intelligent design to take on Aaron Ra. We've invited Jonathan McClatchy. Dr. Jonathan, uh, he is actually going to be in South Africa. My guess is you're speaking that, uh, so he can't make it. You're, you're probably speaking. Is that what you're up to? Yeah, I'm in South Africa being a speaking tour. At gotcha. That time. You bet. So we will hopefully, maybe we'll find uh, a person who's an intelligent design proponent or a creationist, either one. Uh, so let us know. Shoot us an email if you get an idea. Otherwise, we have a Discord. Thanks to Tony Designs and thanks to our dear friend Math Pig as well. They have done a lot of hard work. They've helped a ton. We really appreciate that. And so Discord is another place where you might uh, want to run that. Uh, basically, like possibilities there. That would be excellent. So uh, someone asked what the debate topics are. So Flat Earth for Nathan Thompson and Team Skeptic. And then... R and raw, it would either be creationism or intelligent design. We're tr I'm trying to negotiate theism, but I don't know if it's gonna fit this time. Hoven or I'm sorry, not Hoven. Bosch and Sargon, it would probably be where we're kind of like figuring out what that would be. That's like totally like Sargon's still mulling it over. It's kind of short notice, and so we are not. We don't feel like we're entitled to have him at all. Like I don't want him to feel obligated. Is what I'm trying to say, because um, it is really short notice. He's trying to mull it over. Trying to think of anything else. T Jump, Tom Jump will actually be on the tour as well. McClatchy, Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan, have you debated T Jump before? I have. Um, and actually, he's uh, going to be traveling with me in Asia next summer to do a series of debates. Wow. There. That's exciting. Yep. Really cool. So, yeah, so T Jump will be on the tour as well. He'll be debating Jonathan Sheffield. So, that'll be a lot of fun. And then, so yeah, thanks for everybody's encouragement. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I'll look for this Bob Enyart. Thanks for that name, Flash Gordon. Appreciate the help. And with that, keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable, everybody. Take care. Remember, the Force will be with you always.